talking to you from Newfoundland in Canada. Um, first of all, welcome back for everybody that has been with me for a while and welcome for the new subscribers and also for if you are a new viewer. Um, I normally do a summary of what I did during the previous month. So this is the same thing. I, I do this video just once a, a month normally, I try. Um, April was not a very productive month for me knitting wise because um, I started doing something else at work and I was working longer hours and learning. So I, I was stressed because of that. And also um, our dog Goldie, she had a surgery in, in February, end of February, and then now she had uh, a toe that was uh, very bad and we took, so they, they had to amputate the toe, and, but it was a light cancer. We have been, done, we have been there before because Bagi, our other dog, had the same thing and we removed the, the toe but unfortunately six months later the cancer had spread and we had to put her to sleep. So it was a stressful month and not very productive. I think because of that I made a lot of mistakes and, and stuff. But the positive side of it is that I pick up my spinning again. Because spinning is very relaxing and so I just feel the urge, felt the urge to, to spin again. And that's what I'm doing. So I will start with the spinning since I'm here. I had this fiber so I spun a lot of bobbins. And the funny thing is yesterday I said, oh I finished the brown, I thought I had more. And I said, ah, but okay, I don't have any more, so now I just have to, to ply. And then I could get something else. And this morning I started spinning this. This is 50% bamboo, 30% merino, 10% bison, bison, and 10% cashmere. So it's a nice one. And I was spinning happily my first... Uh, bobbin when I found that I had more all this to spin so I put it back put the bobbin back and that's what I'm spinning so this is what I have in terms of spinning hopefully by the next podcast since I'm into spinning again I will have uh, everything plied and and good with that because I ply with my other spinning wheel but I do, that is the electric one, but I do enjoy the rhythm. I think it's, I think this spinning wheel, my aura, is more relaxing. So if I want to relax, really, I just spin with it and, and it's, it's the rhythm that is calming. But to ply the other one is much better. Anyway, I'm going to use both. It's just that. So I'm still attached to this one. <laughs> um, then in terms of projects, I think the other thing that got me a little bit down is the fact that I ran out of fiber. So I'm doing the Kate Dave's skif Skifty, something like that. And it was not a kit, I bought the yarn and and I bought for a size extra large, but when I got the yarn and I, I had the, the um, pattern, I decided to do the large one. And the funny thing is there were times that I thought it was small, there are times that I think it's large, but I'm just following the pattern. Uh, the other thing is I did the large, but what I did is because I tend to have a tighter gauge when I'm doing color work and it's all color work, right? So I'm, I'm using bigger needles than usual. So I think it should be for a four and a half, I'm using a, or a four millimeters and I'm using a five millimeters. So 
I need 14 rows of color work to finish. And I ran out of the white. So I already ordered more. And of course, because I ordered more, I, I ordered a little bit more yarn for something else because it's coming from England. So I said, if I'm gonna have freight, then let me ask some more. And, but the good thing is that there are a few patterns that I want to do from the, the club, from the Kate Davis club from last year. And I thought, well, then I could buy, but I don't want to buy any more yarn this year. And the patterns that I wanted to do, they're all fingering weight. This is more like a decay. Um, so I said, nah, uh, and I got three skeins of uh, a different yarn just to make a hat. And I'm happy with it. So I will have to wait. I think last time it took at least three weeks to, to get the yarn. So it's going to have to stop. The other thing, I think because I was stressed, the first sleeve went really nice and fast. The second sleeve, I just couldn't make it. Like I did three times and the third time I forgot to change my needles and I had done like up to here with a, a smaller needle and I said, ah, I'm not going to, to do it. And then I finished this leaf, got to the point where I was to mend, and I said, it's not looking fine. And I, f I found a line, a blue line too, on the, on the work. So I said, you know what? I am going to undo it. And I unraveled everything, and I did this leaves again. So the second sleeve was, was bad. But, and... I started to use um, a row counter or a, an abaco, and I was watching a Brazilian podcast, uh, Mi Atelier, and they they were showing how to use. And the funny thing is that I had that row counter for probably two years that my friend made me, and I was so lazy to read how to use it. I just left it there, and it's like very simple. And I think it helps a lot when doing um, when doing the sleeves because I was using the uh, knit companion all the time. I would press uh, every time I did a row. I would press a number to to go higher and higher to count. But many times I just forgot. When you have the row counter, it it's there. You have to move it. And what I liked about her row counter is that it has numbers. It's a little big because it has a lot of beads and stuff, um, but I appreciate the numbers. And the worst thing is that for two years I didn't have it. Now I don't know where I put it and I'm feeling a little bit desperate here because I have a lot of sleeves to make and, and I want it. I really want it. So I have to find it. I looked for some more to buy, but I didn't find one that I like because I want a smaller one, but with the numbers because the numbers are important for me. So, so this is with this project. Uh, it's nice. It's, it's here. So all I need now is to get the leftover yarn and finish up and uh, block it and I think it will fit no problem and in this point this this pattern is is really interesting because it it play games on your eyes but it's beautiful I, I really love the the color I love the design the pattern I love everything so I'm just waiting for for the yarn to come. I have a lot of blue left over. I have three 50 gram skein, uh, almost complete. Yeah, so I have two and this. So I'll definitely have leftovers and that's okay. I can make it to make one of the hats that came on the club. And I also have all, almost all of this because you really use it for maybe three rows. 
I used for one row here, two, and I think there is one more. So I'm going to have a lot of, of leftover of this. I can use it up on the head. So this is my first project uh, in progress. I don't have any finished projects. The second uh, project, the, the funny thing is that I got so disappointed with the fact that I didn't have the, the yarn that it was just a little, that I didn't feel like knitting anymore. So I left it and, and then this past days I did an effort and I got this. So from the last podcast, I was in the beginning of the body for my Linda Neumann sweater. So I was, I think here on the blue and, and white. So I did this all, all the body and, and then I had the sleeves to do in both sweaters and I got a little bit bored. But, so I forced myself, I have to think a little bit because my gauge was different so with the sleeves, it's okay. I just put them on and I see if I need to increase or not. But at the end, I have to be sure that I have enough stitches, uh, multiples of 18, that is the, the pattern on the top is 18 stitches. So the sleeve, one sleeve is done. And this time I had my notebook beside me and I was writing down all the increases that I made. And in this case, I didn't need the abaco or the row counter because I just need to know how many increases I did. It's not the number of rows, but it's more or less where I put it, the increases and how many increases I have. So I'm using the, the stitch markers just to know. And so I still have a way to go on this first sleeve and then I have to do the second sleeve. So I think that yarn wise I'm going to be okay I don't think there's going to be a problem with that um, then oh the other thing I started but then I stopped because oh I forgot I have another one is my primrose Mary Wallen I was not going to start this but I couldn't resist so I started and then I said, no, I need to finish something first. So I stopped, but I always have my, my knitting from the back because I purl, I, I do color work purling instead of knitting. So, so this is how far I went. Um, I have mixed feelings towards this yarn. It's nice to knit with. Uh, I really like knitting with it, but it doesn't feel too soft. It feels uh, a little bit rough, but not rough, rough. It's just weird, but it's okay because I never wear uh, wool directly to my skin because I, I get very itchy. So, so it's fine and I love the colors. I think they're beautiful. The other thing is why do you are knitting? So I get a skein and I have to make sure that I keep the, um, the label with it because otherwise I won't know what is what because there are too many colors. And this is, uh, I think 325 millimeters needles. So, so I have to, to be careful this is not I'm not in a hurry with this one this is gonna take a while um, I would like to uh, free my other needles uh, so that I would do and as I said I have to get my other project um, just one second please So 
I had enough projects, but then I decided to start. Oh, yes. It is uh, one of the Port Portuguese podcasters. She, we have um, a community on the Discord, and they they always have Nita Longs, and they they created she created a Nita Long that was called um, Any Show. So I start this uh, show from Stephen West. I'll, I'll leave the link below with the pattern for everything, and. I had needed much more, and then I figured out that in one of the, the Zoom meetings that we have, we have Zoom meetings every Friday. It starts normal, we have like five hour meetings normally. So in the first meeting that I was doing this, I think I was here and I was using my tablet to, for the meeting, and then I couldn't read the pattern. I said, but I know the pattern. And then I did it wrong. And I had done more than this. And I said to myself, no, it's not going to look fine because you didn't do it right. So I'm doing it now. And this pattern, um, the original, you change the colors and stuff, but I didn't want to do any color change. I wanted a simple pattern and I, I do love it. You don't need to think much. The other day uh, before work, I was knitting and walking around to exercise a little bit because I'm sitting all day long normally. So I think it's pretty cool. I think Stephen West is a genius. I don't know how he managed to create these patterns, but I really like them. It's, it's very nice. So this is my next work in progress. And I like to, to do it when we have the meetings or when I don't want to think or when we are on the road. And then um, the last thing I want to talk about today, as I said, it's a very short one, is uh, one of the Portuguese podcaster, the, it's called Fuse de Maio. It's not the last thing, it's, I have one more thing to talk. She, she, she showed up her little tool bag and she asked us to show her a tool bag. So I think once I showed it once before, but life changes, right? So this is my, my bag. Mihai loves bags and he always gets them to see the design, how they are made, and then they make the bags, uh, make other stuff besides bags. So he bought this at a Velo village and cut the, the hangers of the baggage, the, the belt, oh, sorry, the bag. And, um, and he, he doesn't do anything or with them. So I got them to put my stuff and this is what I have in here. So I have my mini Shiago kit, right? Then I have all the, the needles that I bought separately. And some are in projects. This is the only needle that I kept with me from the old ones because this is a number seven and I don't have another number seven and I don't want to buy. It's not the only one, but I think I have only three. The rest I gave them all. Um, then I have my Chiago kit that I had bought the smaller version and then I added some knitting needles, bought some more, bought some more cables. I have the things that come with it. I really like it. I use it a lot. So that's why I gave the other needles because I just used this once. There was no point in keeping the rest. Then I have um, stitch marker, progress uh, markers, little can. I think I got this from my, from the mother of my uh, daughter-in-law. And, and I had much more stitch markers, but I keep losing them. Well, I have some on projects, but I keep losing them. And then... 
I have lots of this uh, gauge, gauge, uh, needle gauge rulers. And the thing is, if you notice, it, it varies from one to another. So I decided that when I want to know I really use this one unless it's not handy in the sense that I used it and left it somewhere. So this is the one that um, Catarina from Von de Escada, Von de Escada, another Portuguese podcast made for, for a lot of people that had um, Portuguese speaking podcasts. And I love it and I use it a lot. Then I have a pen. Um, this is a, a gold measuring scale. So I think it goes up to one kilo. And like I took in the trip with me that we did to Michigan. And that was nice because I would always check the, the skin to see how many grams I was using up for the two rows for the other show. And that's how, what helped me to stop where I stopped. So I have this, I have scissors. Oh, and let me just put this back. And I have this um, metric thing that I like because you can do this and then I put the the knitting hanging and I have a better idea of how much I need. I think Mihai got this, I don't know, Home Depot, two of them and I have them both. Sometimes the, he wants it, he comes and asks me for it, but it's really nice. So let me just put it back, the things here. The other thing I have is Maria João do Pontinhos ao Vento, another Portuguese podcast. Um, we, we had a Christmas secret friend and she gave me this little pouch and, oops, and, um, and then I have some stuff there. This is a wraps per inch. So when I'm, when I have a yarn, when I finish spinning a yarn, I wrap around one inch to see what classification it's going to be. So I really use this. It is in bad shape, all tearing apart, but it's because I use it all the time when I'm spinning more than lately. And it's gonna say, for example, 19 to 22 wraps per inch, that is a fingering weight. And then the needles for you to use is US one, two, three, or metric 225 to 325. So it's a great uh, way for me to start, uh, to know which needle to start with the project that I have. Then I have from my knitting courses, my spinning courses, this, this thing that is a snapper. So you put it this and it snips the, the fiber and, and everything. I had two of this, but now I have only one. And I keep it here too, but in this little bag. Then I have some needle felting needles. Never know when, when you're gonna need. I have another ruler. And then I have this, I bought this at Walmart and I love these needles. So when I'm weaving ends or something, I like to use this because it doesn't matter uh, how much they are and these are flexibles, the, the top and, and then it's, it works very well. I really like them. And it's at Walmart so everybody can, can find them. So I like to keep this here. Then last time I have, I had some of this for a long time. And I think last time I went to Walmart, I don't go to Walmart very often. Uh, I don't go anywhere very often, <laughs> unless the, it is the clinic. I also saw these uh, needle holders and I thought they were so cute. I haven't worn, used them yet, but 
but they are cute. So I think if, if you're knitting socks with double pointed needles, they would be perfect for that. They're cute. Oh, I found it. <laughs> they are where they should be. So this is my, um, see, I was so organized that I didn't know. So this is my row counter and I love it because I, I'm knitting. I always know that I start with this. It has a number one. That means that the number that is here is the row I am just done. So you just keep moving it and, and I really love it. I just think it's beautiful. My friend uh, Soraya made it for me, but I would like just to have the number so that it's not as big if I could have the number together with the thing. Because if you have just the little bow, sometimes, uh, sometimes when I'm moving the thing, I look at the number first and then it comes out completely. But I know where I am because I look at the number. If it doesn't have the number, I think it would be bad. So I really like it and and I was keeping it with my stitch markers, but I think this is a better place to put it. I really love it. Then I have from Walmart too, some um, cable needles, two sizes, and I like them a lot. I always keep with me a crochet hook in this bag because many times I use a crochet hook to do um, to weave in the the ends I think it's easier um, so so I keep one with me I also have some needles that are all metal and the other thing I keep here are the the stitch holders and I have a few and I like them because when I'm when I'm doing the the sweaters that I need to leave uh, the space under the arm I use this on so this is pretty good I have more of this I have a few stitch markers here and a needle that is all curved I don't think I have used this unless I don't find the other needles but I think this is even no I don't know if this is broken or not but it goes back to the plastic and that's pretty much it that I have here and I show the other one so this is my kit so for me um, I leave these special things here that I need and and I like because it's an easy thing so my husband made me three sizes of, of project bags I asked him he he likes to work with leather and I asked for bags and he made me three sizes a small a medium and a large and the medium is good enough for a, a sweater for a sweater uh, knitting project bag but he made me some big ones and in the beginning I thought oh these are too big but the good thing about them is that if you see this bag it has my sweater that is practically done so it's it has volume right Oh, and here I also have some metric thing that should be in this one. So I, it's a full project, bulky. It fits everything in here. I still have 350 gram, 450 gram skeins. And I can take this bag and put it here. close it and it's perfect so every time I travel I like to have this little bag with me because I always think well 
if I finish my project on the way and I have nothing else to knit, I can stop somewhere, buy some fiber, and, uh, and I have all the needles here. And the other thing is I can also put my tablet in here, even though it's, the, it's bigger than my last one. I can put my tablet in here. And the good thing is that then I have patterns because I have my tablet and I have all the needles. I can start any project. So I do like these bags and he put some of the, um, the park uh, things that we have. So I really like it. Then the last thing I would like to talk about is um, I, I, I have been wanting to talk about uh, the podcast that I watch. So last episode I talked about and I put the links below on the last pod, uh, episode of the Portuguese podcasters that are starting to do um, English podcasts too. And I have a few that I would like to mention that I, that I watch like every time they come. I, I have more podcasts that I watch, but these are podcasts that I watch every time they come and I'm excited when they come. So the first one is Frau Nitz. I don't know how to say it correctly. Uh, she's from Ireland and she mentions, uh, she talks about, she shows her projects. I love her color choices and her project's choices. They are different. It's not the same thing all the time that you see everywhere. So I like that. And um, I also like that she talks, she always talks about um, Irish history, Ireland in general, culture. So I think that's pretty cool. I always love this, um, to know about other cultures. And, and that's, that's really nice. So I'll put, I don't know how to say the name correctly, but I'll put a link uh, below so that you know. The other one that I uh, always watch is Studio Nora. She's from Holland, I believe. Um, and um, she's young, she just had a baby. And I, I do like to watch her. I think I like podcasts that the person is calm. I think that that what I like. If, if the voice is too, um, uh, you know, too loud or it, it, it doesn't calm me down, I, I don't like it. I, I can't watch sometimes. So I like this because they're calm, they're talking. Uh, Knitting in Mauritius, it's an interesting, she is from Poland and she lives in Mauritius and she shows a lot of living in Mauritius, but I like that a lot, that she shows me uh, the plants, the, the birds, everything. And that's very interesting. I even, now and again, I have to look again to see where Mauritius is. And, and I always confuse with Madagascar and there is a point, it's because you have Mad Africa, Madagascar, and then you have Mauritius are two little points here. Um, what I like about her is that she's very colorful, very positive, very uplift. Um, so it's very nice. And many times she tells some patterns that I feel like doing and I, and I do too. Um, and that sense of, uh, of course, fruity knitting is my favorite one. I, I do love fruit knitting and that's the one that I start watching and it's hard to find something on their level. There are good things, but fruity knitting is, is way above everything else for me. Um, then I watch a Canadian Fleece and Harmony that I watch all the time. She does it twice a week. They have a meal in um, Prince Edward Island here in Canada, and I watch them all the time. I watch Le Garçon. I love his patterns, Max the Knitter. And um, so I watch their podcast. I just watch it today and, and I laugh and, and I like it. It's very relaxing too, has some good moments. Um, then 
I think oh I also like very much the Amy Palco from the the meaningful stitch and again I think the the common path here the common point oh I can't forget Wu and Wishes Wu and Wishes is a uh, two British ladies and they're very very like they do a lot of stuff they they're very productive and very creative. So this is another podcast. I think it comes once a month. And every time I see it, I want to watch it too. So so this is the other one. Oh, and there is one more. I'm going to have a list of podcasts here today. And that one is Mel Makes Stuff. She's American. Um, and she loves color work. And I love color work. In the last episode, she talks about this um, scout shawl from Florence Sperling. Let me show you the shawl. This thing is killing me because it's it's color work with antarsia and because it's front and back, for me, it's a little bit harder to do. And I wanted to do a coat coat using this this kind of work I was uh, I'm I'm going to buy this pattern and I thought even of using the same pattern to do my coat but I have the point that I have to do it front and back and I think that's gonna take a while so I don't know maybe I'll try a show first to see how I work with it and then go for the coat but she has beautiful stuff beautiful color work she does other stuff but what really attracts me to her podcast is the the color work and she's nice she's very educative like she she explains a lot of things and i think it's nice so i guess um for today it is all um we are in April and I was expecting to see the icebergs only end of May. We are in, in May now, but I think last week we saw an iceberg uh, 20 minutes from where we live and that was a thrill. And the interesting thing is that the locals also were thrilled. So you would think, oh, they see that every year. No, they see that every year, but they still stop the car they go and try to look at it and it's really nice so um we got some footage of this uh of this iceberg that was near our house like 20 minutes north of where we are and unfortunately i think it got stuck there because it didn't come here we saw some here but they were very small so i think when they melt enough then they just pass by very fast and uh, that's it for today i'll see you by the end of the month or early next month thank you for watching and see you next time bye i've been drifting across the ocean i've been searching for the crimson sky i've been starring my As a